Okay. Oh, okay. darkness I called your name into darkness your mercy came you called me out lifting me up how great is your love you bore my weakness you took my shame buried my burden in fields of grace you call me out lifting me up how great is your love from the heights of heaven you step down to earth in a sin perfection gave your life for us and we are Good morning. This wet, cooler weather uh, usually slows slows me down at least. Uh, maybe you've experienced that, which isn't altogether a bad thing. I think it's good to be slowed down every now and then. We uh, sometimes are more aware of the things we might overlook. Um, uh, hopefully that's the, the case. It gives us an opportunity to be more aware, to attend more to the, the quiet things in our lives. Well, we'll hear about uh, things we uh, might overlook uh, in our sermon today. That'll be kind of like a, um, we'll hear some repeated uh, scripture passages, kind of continuing themes from last week. Uh, it'll seem kind of like the, the same old, but there's always, I think, a reason why we, we hear those things again, right? The important things uh, in life, you're supposed to be here again and again to remind you of, of their centrality. Uh, and that'll be the case today. So 
Uh, be aware of that in our, our message as we hear from John, uh, the gospel, and then the First John uh, epistle as well. See that many of you have your name tags. Uh, thank you for wearing those. Reminder, though, uh, there's some at the usher station. So if you uh, choose to wear one, helps us get to know one another. And uh, we'll have um, some more announcements later uh, in our service. So that's, that's it for now. So I'll invite you to stand as you're able for our greeting. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. We enter this pattern of uh, confession and hearing again those words of forgiveness, words of pardon, when we don't feel like we match up to the, be the people who we want to be, the people who God wants us to be. We are reminded of that continuous, uh, ever-present grace and mercy that is ours through Jesus. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let's pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those you love, those who love you, joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and evermore. Amen. Remain standing for our opening hymn.
You may be seated, and we'll hear today's readings. Our first reading is from 1 John 5, 1 through 6, a reading from the first book of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey God's commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey God's commandments. And God's commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. The Gospel is from John 15, 9 through 17, the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that may that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I've heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. And I'll invite the children to come forward for the children's message. All right. Good morning, guys. How are we? Good? All right. Let's make room here. You got to find a spot, Cameron. As you scoot over, I think Cameron wants to sit next to his brother. There we go. There we go. All right. I have a story for you today, Um, and this story took place a a while ago. There was a man who went to an orphanage. Do you know what that is, an orphanage? Yeah, Alex. Yeah, yeah, it's a place where kids live. Either they don't have parents or their parents can't take care of them for some reason. There are all these boys at this orphanage, and this one man went to the orphanage, and he saw this other kid carry a younger kid down the stairs. He had him kind of on his back, and he was kind of giving him a piggyback ride down the stairs. And the boy who he was carrying, the boy had a a disease called polio. We have vaccines for polio now, so uh, it's, it's, it was a terrible virus that uh, it, it makes it so your legs can't work. Yeah, and, and a while ago, decades ago now, uh, people suffered, a lot of people suffered from polio, and it was a real terrible thing. But we have a vaccine for it, so it's not as widespread as it used to be. Anyway, this younger kid had, had polio. That's why he couldn't walk down the stairs, and that's why his older friend was, was carrying him. And the man saw this. He saw the kids, and he said, that boy, is that heavy? He, he looks heavy. 
You know, are you okay carrying him down the stairs? And the boy, the older boy, said, oh, he's not heavy. He's my brother. And that's kind of a, a really, uh, the man remembered that. He remembered that, that this kid doesn't see this other kid who he's carrying as a burden, but he sees him as a brother. And that story reminded me, well, I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, that story reminded me of what Jesus says in, in uh, what he said in, in John and what we hear again here. We have, uh, we heard this scripture, for the love of God is this, that we obey God's commandments and God's commandments are not burdensome. Well, Jesus tells us that we should love one another as as Jesus loves us. And that seems like a really tough love, huh? That seems like a big burden because we're called to continue to love some, even when we don't want to, even when we don't think we have the time to, you know, and that can feel like a big burden to us sometimes. But the story of that boy carrying that other boy, what that, that older man did was he remembered that years later and he started these other orphanages, homes for, for boys, and they, they could take care of one another. And he really wanted us to see that, you know what, just like Jesus, we're not supposed to see each other as a burden to carry, but brothers and sisters, you know, that we have, we, we're here to help each other. And that's the love that, that Jesus wants us to have. So sometimes when it feels like, ooh, this, I don't know if I could do this love by myself, this is a pretty big ask, that we can look to other people. See, that's why we're part of a congregation here. We're part of a bigger body, so we could ask for help. Say, hey, could you help me do this? Could you help me to love like Jesus and, and, and help, it, help me out? And that's the kind of love that Jesus wants us to have, that we share that with, with one another. And it won't be a burden Right? It'll be something that Jesus kind of helps us do. Yeah. What do you think about that? It takes a while to practice, doesn't it? But it sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm going to say a prayer for you before Sunday school time, okay? Let's pray. God, you call us to a very big sometimes scary love and sometimes it feels like a burden but help move in our hearts that we can see a love that is good and a love that is needed in this world help us to practice that love where we can in jesus name amen all right well, I, I think miss chris is doing sunday school today okay we'll see you later Well, one of the benefits of preaching from a lectionary, you know, having these assigned uh, texts each week is the movement through kind of the main themes of Scripture, right? That, that my preaching or, or a good preacher's preaching isn't up to the, the whim and proclivities of that particular preacher. Uh, instead, they're kind of challenged to, to take on uh, these different recurring themes. Uh, counterpoint to that however, is that due to how these assigned texts have lined up, it feels like my past three sermons could have been interchangeable to uh, any particular week. So I found it a little challenging this week. Uh, we hear again of that, uh, that language of abiding in Jesus' love, uh, that love is the fruit of those who are born of God, uh, and that we're to love one another as Christ has loved us, and that kind of all just swirls together, uh, doesn't it, sometimes? At least it does for me. Uh, but again, the good things, the central things are those that uh, we hear more than once that we're kind of asked to keep engaging with. Uh, and that very repetition actually reminded me of a story. And it was a story I heard a few years ago, this woman named uh, Ann Adams, who's a, a scientist, 
and she, she paused her career as a scientist. I think she was a biologist uh, to take care of her son who got in a car accident. She, she helped her son recover. And when he had recovered from the car accident, instead of going back to being a practicing scientist, uh, she decided to just drop all that and she became a full-time artist probably to the surprise of, of uh, her, her spouse, uh, some of her, her friends. And eventually she became uh, fascinated with this one particular classical music piece called Bolero. It's a piece by French composer Maurice Ravel. Maybe you've heard it before. Take a, a little listen here. Sound familiar? The song doesn't really ever progress. The melody just stays the same. And all that really happens is more and more instruments are added onto it as it progresses. It just gets a little more, a little uh, more accompaniment as it grows, but it's the same song. So Anne was so fascinated by this song that she decided, I'm gonna recreate this in music. I'm gonna represent this song visually. So she had notes for every color, or every note was a different color. The symbols, the pitch, that was all represented visually in her piece here. Each bar was given this, this, uh, this rectangle, and it was added on, added on to it. Uh, and the full two panels here is the whole, the whole song. And she was just absolutely obsessed with, with this song and making this visual representation of it that uh, she eventually made, made this piece. But unfortunately, this, this piece of creativity takes a, a more ominous turn because that same uh, burst of creativity that led to both Ravel creating Bolero, the, the actual music, and her piece here was likely uh, the beginnings of a rare form of dementia. In this, they both shared this, this uh, obsession, right? Ravel with music, her with the visual representation, and they lived decades apart, but both eventually experienced this loss of language and it was replaced by this obsession, right? It came flooding in. Instead of that language that was lost, what came flooding in was this creative burst to do something. Uh, but that repetition was a sign of, unfortunately, an underlying disease. And many of you know, unfortunately, the terrible scourge of a disease that dementia is. I know some of you have personal experience with dementia or a loved one who has suffered from dementia, that disease that erases the most recognizable parts of ourselves, that which makes us who we are. And a connection point that I, that I am finding here between this story and today's scriptures is that we experience both the pain and the beauty of repetition in life. Time and time again, we encounter uh, the effects of sin, uh, of a broken world, right? We see the, the pain that that causes in lives, in our own, in the lives of our neighbors as well. But the beauty of it, too, is that we also recognize the, the call to, have, to live and practice a repeated love, right? That we can't just do one act of love in the world and think that that's enough, but we're repeatedly called to a love, and today we hear about that command uh, to love one another, that, that command that we have understood now as the refrain of Christian life. And we hear from Jesus, again, these words, he's kind of towards the end of his time with his disciples. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No greater love has anyone than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And as we learn how to practice this love, we realize what a high calling it is, that we can't live up to this love that Jesus has. No matter how hard we try, our love falls short. And of course, Jesus is explaining the, the movement that he's doing, what he's about to do, what he's continually willing to do. Um, and we think of it as, you know, we can think of this as a love to try to live up to. And sometimes it feels like as we do so, we can kind of do so in a, in a flourish of our own strength, 
right? But Jesus isn't calling us to use our love to do what only God can do. He's not calling us to love in only the way that God can. But he has something else going on here. Here's what he says to his disciples. I do not call you servants any longer. Because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. Because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. Everything that he's heard from God. And one of the common uh, uh, commentators, theologians, James Allison, he's, he's looking at this movement of the, from servant to friends. And here is uh, uh, an insight that he says. He says, friends are not given compartmentalized tasks. Instead, they're entrusted with being imaginative, creative sharers of the whole project. And I really appreciate that perspective, that, that kind of shift towards seeing ourselves as sharers of this project of God's love being made known in the world. As agents of love, we're seeking to be shaped by the love of Christ, and we experience the limits of our own love, the limits of our own efforts, right? Just yesterday in the holy listening group, we were, we were meeting, and one of the things that, uh, one of the kind of reflection pieces caught my attention um, is that you your lot is not to go through life living solely by your own power. And that caught my attention because oftentimes I think of, of my ministry and usually my approach to ministry of, of what I do as the uh, capacity of what I have, right? Those things that I have time for, the things that I have energy for. And I, I look at that, I, I make those calculations based on on what I can do, right? And, and so I think about, okay, when do I need to replenish uh, my, my power, you know, my own strength that I use? But instead, this is a really important challenge that it's not by our own power, right? Just last week, we made the, heard the proposal and made the, the vote to, to change the, the structure of council base. And a lot of that was based on a realized capacity of, of leadership and of what people have time for. And that's an important structural change to make. I think the other connection that is equally important is right when we do that, right alongside that, needs to be an awareness of, well, what is our spiritual engagement then, right? What is the well that we're tapping into to do what we are really finding uh, you know, as we're stretching the limits of what we can do, how, how can we, we do those important things? But what are we, how are we being connected to this love that God is calling us to live? The love that we're not just kind of left on our own to do, but the one that we're fed by. And so we need that reminder that living in the love of God means, you know, being connected to a strength beyond our own. And we heard in... First John, what, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. And honestly, most times I find it really difficult, uh, really challenging to hear, to hear this about faith or about our love conquering the world. Because often it feels like there's far, far too much suffering. We experience plenty of things to erode our faith. And anything that we, that we do, any love that we kind of express, doesn't in any way feel like it's conquering, right? In no discernible way does it feel like uh, love is winning in the world at times. And maybe I wonder uh, at some of my my most struggling times, if our Christian love isn't unlike the story of Bolero, right? That we can only hope to repeat uh, the same things. The best we can hope for are these bursts of creative, life-giving love before the grind and struggle and trials of this world wear us down. But then, in some of my more hopeful moments, I wonder if love is also resistance. And seeking to be connected to a source of love in Jesus, 
I think we're resisting the lie that we're the source of our own life and the sum of our own choices. In this resistance, it's maybe our prayer that God helps us recognize that this love for the world is vital. And so as hard as it is, maybe we do need the repetition of that love wherever we can, however we are able to summon it up, but that it is always connected to the life-giving love of Jesus that is always with us, that always calls us, that always feeds us. Amen. God really
Today, Sandra will be leading us in our prayers, and there'll be a time for you to share any prayers that you may have. Uh, just raise your hand if you'd like to share during that time, and the uh, microphone will, will come around. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in, good, in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our congregation commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners. God of grace, hear our prayer. You speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that habitats and every kind of living thing might flourish. Protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Your world is divided and the nations rage. Grant wisdom and vision to world leaders that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer, especially those afflicted by anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love in our care for one another. God of grace, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world. Inspire those who plan and lead worship, council members, committee members, and volunteers. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear now the prayers we offer. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For justice and peace among nations where war and violence rage, especially Palestine and Israel, Iran, Myanmar, Iraq, Haiti, Russia, and Ukraine, and South Sudan. For safety, understanding, and productive resolution to student war protests at Columbia, Yale, and other institutions. For evacuees and all who are affected by the eruption of Mount Ruang in Indonesia. For a fair judicial system in our nation, and for all people serving in the court system. For people to be provided for, for animals and plants to endure, and for rain to come amongst the drought in southern Africa. For all who grieve and work for recovery after flooding. For those who seek justice in the workplace. God of grace, hear, hear our prayers. Prayer. Your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us. At the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet table. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll now gather the tithes and offerings.
Please stand as you are able, and we join together in the offering prayer. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Once again, we prepare for this meal of grace, this meal of presence where Christ is with us. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your Holy Spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in, the arms, in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. We join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Uh, just a reminder for communion today, Sandra will be over at the prayer uh, rail. If anyone would like t uh, someone to, to pray with them, Sandra will be over there gladly offering uh, someone to pray with you. And uh, we'll commune with the music team first, going from this side to this side here. Uh, we do have some newer, smaller wafers today, so... Uh, I'm sure we'll be curious to hear your feedback on those. Uh, Gluten-free wafers as well for those who have uh, that preference. Juice on the smaller tray, wine on the larger tray. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of bread. Friends, come and eat. This is God's table.
never been, there will never be, a God like you, a love so true, there has never been, there will never be, a 
God like you, a love so true. There has never been, there will never be a God like you, a love so true. There has never been, there will never be a God like you, a love so true. pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your great love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and our friend. Amen. All right, getting to our announcements today. Looks like we do have uh, some snacks set up, so please uh, stay if you're able to join us for our fellowship time. Um, though There's still a sign-up sheet on the back if you can contribute and wish to for future weeks. Um, contribute snacks for fellowship time, that is. Uh, in a couple Sundays, next, right, next week's Mother's Day Sunday, uh, the following week uh, will be Pentecost, and we'll be welcoming new members at that time, too. So, uh, as well as hearing from some testimonies from uh, a couple longtime members, I think I'll go ahead and say it now. Jacob will be sharing uh, about his uh, experience at, at SLV, and we'll be hearing from Corinne as well. Hopefully, she's feeling uh, well enough to share. Um, so, that will be... Uh, Pentecost will look a little different, uh, but it'll, it'll be good. It'll be a part of our celebration time for our 50th anniversary. So uh, that to look forward to in a couple weeks. All right. We have, uh, we put the, the cross with the flowers up last week and it got added to today. Christy, will you talk about what has been uh, added to that and why and what that means, the whole process of what this, this looks like here? No, you can do it. You can do it. Uh, so we've added the leaves. On each leaf is an item that we have up here. We want to make 10 of each kit. The kit on the left is a kitchen kit. The kit on the right is a bathroom kit. These will be given to refugees who are coming to the area. Uh, they have a number of kits. We decided to focus on these two because this is what the uh, agency said they were most in need of. We want to make 10 of each. Each le leaf represents something you can choose. We have a, they've included an average price range on them, whether it's $65 to $70, which is a kitchen kit. Or you could do a set of plates, six to eight plates for $25. The, it's not that it costs, you only can spend $25. That's what we found on the website was the average cost certainly welcome to get something more if you'd like. So you can take a leaf, pick an item, bring it back, and put it in the donation bin out front. And we have two months to collect these. And at the end of the two months, we will assemble them. And I believe we're going to have VBS be a part of it. But I'm not sure how we're doing that yet. <laughs> Okay, so stay, stay tuned for more information. This is the whole process. We have a couple months. Uh, refugee Collective, Refugee Care Collective partners with a number of the refugee resettlement agencies in, uh, in the city, in this area. So um, good, good work that they're, they're doing and a uh, couple months to, to be part of this project. All right, um, and a blood drive this coming Friday. Linnea, are we still looking for help for that? Yes, set up help is, 
morning, a morning shift from about 10.30 to, to 2. Okay, so that involves setting up uh, and helping check people in. So see Linnea if you're able to uh, be part of that morning shift. Otherwise, uh, if you can, give blood. See what times uh, are, are available. That's 12 to 5 this uh, Friday. Any more announcements? Oh, yep, Sharon. Microphone there. Oh, you want to use this one? Sure. Mine isn't really an announcement. I have done this before, and normally I would do this next Sunday, but I'm not going to be here, so I want to read it to you now. And it's called Letter, letter from a Mother to a Daughter, but it could be Mother to a Son. My dear girl, the day you see I'm getting old, I ask you to please be patient, but most of all, try to understand what I'm going through. If when we talk, I repeat the same thing a thousand times, don't interrupt to say you said the same thing a minute ago. Just listen, please. Try to remember the times when you were little and I would read the same story night after night until you would fall asleep. When I don't want to take a bath, don't be mad and don't embarrass me. Remember when I had to run after you making excuses and trying to get you to take a shower when you're just a girl? When you see how ignorant I am when it comes to new technology, give me the time to learn and don't look at me that way. Remember, honey, I patiently taught you how to do many things, like eating appropriately, getting dressed, combing your hair, and dealing with life's issues every day. The day you see I'm getting old, I ask you to please be patient but most of all, try to understand what I'm going through. If I occasionally lose track of what we're talking about, give me the time to remember. And if I can't, don't be nervous, impatient or arrogant. Just know in your heart that the most important thing for me is to be with you. And when my old tired legs don't let me move as quickly as before, give me your hand the same way that I offered mine to you when you first walked. When those days come, don't feel sad, just be with me and understand me while I get to the end of my life with love. I'll cherish you and thank you for the gift of time and joy we shared. With a big smile and the huge love I've always had for you, I just want to say I love you, my darling daughter. Happy Mother's Day. Another, uh, kind of going with repetition is the theme of today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing that. Um, Sandra, yeah, you please share a little bit about yesterday. Yeah. yeah, so we had our holy listening yesterday. We had our holy listening yesterday, and uh, we're going to be having it again on, on the first Saturday of every month at 1 o'clock. Um, and it's not necessary that you've attended a previous one to attend uh, upcoming ones. Um, we just gather to, uh, to listen to what God is, is speaking into our lives and, and to support each other. And so um, please join us and uh, we, we'd love to have you. Um, and I was thinking maybe next time, uh, if, if you have a favorite Bible verse, um, mention that to us, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, good time we had yesterday here. Okay. Well, I am aware that it is the first Sunday of the month. So any May birthdays out there, I know we have some. I know we have some May birthdays. Come on up. Well, uh, oh, Craig. Oh, okay. Come, you get started, start, do, do the key to start and we'll, we'll play. You come on up, you come on up too. You just get them started. Thank you. 
Church. Happy birthday, indeed. Uh, please stand as you're able for the blessing and our closing song. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our help has come. Our help has come in the name of the Lord, the one who formed all the earth and the sky. Behold, he comes to destroy the chains of death and raise us up to life. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Bless his name, for he has given us everything we need to fly. Our broken wings, they have not hindered us. We have the Lord, he's on our side. His name, for He has given us everything we need to fly. Our broken wings, they have not hindered us. We have the Lord, He's on our side. He's on our side. We have the Lord, He's on our side. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you knew exactly what I was... Yeah. <laughs> um, let's just do the whole thing. No key change, though. <laughs> People get ready. There's a train of time. You don't need no bag. 
baggage, you just get on board. Uh. All you need is faith to hear the diesel's humming. You don't need no ticket, you just thank the Lord. a train to Jordan, picking up passengers from coast to coast. Faith is key, open up the doors and border. There's hope for all, for the love the most. There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. You don't need no ticket. You just fail. 